Hello, I am Rinki Chopra. I am a PhD student at Electrical Engineering Department, IIT Bombay. Also, I am a teaching assistant for this course. I am working in the area of RF and microwave. So, today I will be taking a lecture on microwave diodes. So, let us start the lecture. Firstly, I will give you the brief outline of this lecture. We will be starting with semiconductor materials. Then we will talk about N type and P type of semiconductor materials. After that we will discuss about PN junction diode, then Vector diode, Schottky diode, Pin diode, Tunnel diode and finally Gun diode. So let us start with semiconductor material. We know in any atom electrons can occupy only discrete energy levels. Now if two or more such type of atoms are brought in close vicinity then the electrons at the similar level should shift to the higher energy level. Now many of such atoms are if brought in the close vicinity they form energy regions. These regions are called as bands. Two of the bands are the conduction band and the balance band and they are separated by a forbidden region. This forbidden region is also known as the energy band gap or forbidden gap. The band gap defines a significant role in defining the conductivity of the material. Now the materials are divided into three types. First one is metal, then semiconductor and insulators. So in case of metals, the conduction band and the valence band overlap with each other. So an electron can move from the valence band to the conduction band at 0 Kelvin. In this case, electrons play main role in the conduction. So the only type of carriers are the electrons. So this is a material which has only one type of charge carriers that are electrons. The next type of material is insulator. In case of insulator, the band gap between the conduction band and the valence band is relatively high. It is of the order of 4 to 9 electron volt. So electron cannot move easily from valence band to the conduction band. It requires a sufficient amount of energy to move an electron from the valence band to the conduction band. So they are not a conducting material. The next type of material is the semiconductor material. The band gap in the semiconductor material is between the insulators and the metals. It is of the order of 1 electron volt. Now at room temperature, the electrons gain sufficient energy from the thermal energy so that they can move from the valence band to the conduction band. And when an electron moves from the valence band to the conduction band, it leaves behind a hole. Now if you supply some energy in this particular case, this vacancy is filled by another electron. So it looks like that the movement is also taking place because of holes. So in the semiconductors there are two type of charge carriers, holes and electrons. Now the concentration of holes in any band is defined by the Fermi energy level. So Fermi level is the energy level which would have 50% of probability of occupying at any instant of time. Now I will talk about the semiconductor materials which are used by the industry. So the most commonly used semiconductor material is silicon. The band gap for silicon is 1.12 electron volt. For germanium the band gap is 0.66 electron volt. For gallium arsenide it is 1.43 electron volt. For indium phosphide it is 1.27 electron volt. Now among these semiconductor materials, silicon is the most widely used semiconductor materials and most of the electronic devices are made using silicon materials. And few of the active devices are also made using the semiconductor material but they are not suitable candidates for the microwave frequency range because they suffers with the uh, problem of uh, uh, minority charge carriers storage which will not provide the desirable performance at the microwave frequency region. Now if I see these two type of materials, they are the compound semiconductor materials. Now if you see the energy gap for these materials are relatively high but they offers the significant advantages over these two materials like they provide low noise figure 
high power handling capability and they can operate up to very high frequency range maybe up to terahertz. Now if I want to increase the conductivity of the semiconductor material, so the semiconductor material conductivity can be increased by adding the small amount of impurity in the semiconductor materials. So there are two types of impurities which can be added to semiconductor materials. The one of the impurity is the n type of impurity which belongs to valence 5 group. So let us take an example of an atom from valence 5 group. So phosphorus is the example from valence 5 group. If we add the impurity of phosphorus in a silicon lattice, now we know in case of phosphorus it contains the 5 electrons in its outermost shell. So these electrons form the covalent bond with the silicon lattice that can be seen from this particular figure and the fifth electron is loosely coupled to this lattice. Now at the room temperature this electron gains the sufficient energy so that it can move from the valence band to the conduction band and it is negatively ionized. Similar case happen in case of other impurity atoms. Now when the impurity atoms are added the amount of impurity atoms are generally lies between 10 to the power 10 to 10 to the power 18 atoms in per centimeter cube region. So if you see in these n type of materials the impurity atom have a tendency to uh, donate the electrons. So that is why this impurity atom is called as donor. So in this n type of materials electrons are the majority carriers and holes are the minority carriers. Now the Fermi level in these type of materials is shifted towards the conduction band. I will show you Fermi level in the next slide. The next type of material is the p type of material. When you add the impurity from valence 3 group, for example if we add a boron atom which belongs to valence 3 group, now we know in case of boron in uh, its outermost shell 3 electrons are there. So they form a covalent bond with the silicon lattice. You can see here and at the fourth position it has a tendency to accept the electrons from the adjacent covalent bond of the silicon. Now at room temperature it again gains sufficient energy so that it accepts the electrons from the adjacent silicon lattice and becomes positively ionized. Now the vacancy is created at this particular place. This vacancy is again filled by another electron and the hole will be created at that particular location. So it looks like that the movement of hole is taking place. In these type of materials holes are the majority carriers and electrons are the minority carriers. Now these type of impurity atom have a tendency to accept the electrons. So they are called as acceptors. In these type of materials the Fermi energy level lies near the valence band that I will show you in the next slide. Now if the n type of material and p type of material are brought together then they form a junction that junction is called as a p-n junction diode. Here you can see that in case of p region the Fermi energy level is near the valence band. In case of n region the Fermi energy level is near the conduction band. Now when these materials are brought close to each other they have a tendency to make a equilibrium. So we know in case of p regions holes are the majority carriers and in case of n region the electrons are the majority carriers. Then these carriers will try to make the equilibrium so hole from the p region will try to diffuse into the n region and electrons from the n region will try to diffuse into the p region and they will leave behind the positive ions in case of n region and the negative ions in case of p region. So near the junction they form a space charge region which builds the electrostatic potential and this electrostatic potential further refuses the diffusion of electrons from the n side to the p side and 
it also refuses the diffusion of holes from the P side to the N side. Therefore, in equilibrium, there is no flow of current due to the built-in potential. The built-in potential is defined by the impurity atoms or the doping profile and the type of material which is used. So the built-in potential for silicon lattice is 0.7 volt and for germanium it is 0.3 volt. Now I will talk about the operation of this PN junction diode before going into the operation mode just see the IV characteristics of this diode. Now I will talk about the operation of this diode using the IV characteristics of this diode. So when the PN junction is connected in forward bias mode that means if the positive terminal is connected to the P side and the negative terminal is connected to the N side then it will repel the holes away from the terminal and it will again repel the electrons away from the negative terminal. So they will try to reduce the depletion region. So that can be seen from this particular curve. So when the forward bias voltage is greater than the built in potential or the knee voltage. So up to this point only the reverse saturation current will flow which comes into the picture due to the uh, electron hole pair generation. So when the uh, forward bias voltage is greater than the built in potential the current flows in this particular circuit. When the forward bias voltage is much greater than the thermal voltage which is defined by the KT by Q and that is 26 millivolt at room temperature. So when the forward bias voltage is much larger than the thermal voltage then the current ex increases exponentially. This can be seen from this particular curve and the current of this particular curve is represented by this expression. This is known as the Shockley's current equation. So here you can see if Vt is less, it, if V is much greater than the Kt by Q then it will increase exponentially. Now if I bias this PN junction diode in reverse mode that is if the P region is connected to the negative terminal and the N side is connected to the positive terminal. Now the terminal will attract the holes toward the P region and the positive terminal will attract the electrons towards the negative terminal. So the depletion layer width will increase and it will restrict the flow of current. So you can see in reverse mode there is a very less of current which is equivalent to the reverse saturation current. Now if we increase the reverse bias voltage to a sufficient large value then the current increases suddenly. Why does this happen? Because for this particular voltage the electrons gain sufficient energy so that they knock out the electrons from the outer orbit of the atom and the current increases. The reverse bias voltage can also be increased further. There is no harm in using the PN junction diode above this reverse bias voltage but make sure that there should be a connection with the resistor so that it should not damage the diode. One more thing one should keep in mind while using this diode in this particular region that it should not exceed the maximum current because if it is to be brought in below breakdown voltage then it should be operated in the normal region. So that is the thing that one should keep in mind when one is exceeding the Zener breakdown voltage. Next I will talk about this diode circuit model. So the diode will be represented by a non-linear current source in parallel with two type of capacitance. The one capacitance is the junction capacitance and the another one is the diffusion capacitance. Then this should be connected in series with the series resistor which accounts for the losses in the depletion region. Now this diode is to be packaged. So the packaging losses should also be considered. So the CP capacitor is included to account for the packaging capacitance and this LP is considered here to account for the bonding wire inductance. Now how to make this particular diode? To make the diode the lightly doped N type of layer should be deposited on heavily doped N type of substrate then the P type of layer should be deposited on the N type of layer. Now to make the electrical connection with the 
circuit the metallic contacts are provided at both the ends these are the metallic contacts you can see this metallic contacts could be of tungsten aluminum gold etc the next is where these type of diodes should be used so there are various applications in which these diodes can be used the diode can be used as a rectifier voltage regulator switches power limiter digital gates clipping clamping etc now depending upon the application one should choose the diodes now before going into the practical diodes i'll talk about the representation of this diode so this diode is represented by this particular symbol here this terminal represents the anode and this terminal represents the cathode now the forward current will flow in this particular direction so it supports the movement in one direction and this is called as the unipolar device in ideal case it will only support the current flow in this direction and it will not allow any current to flow in the reverse direction now the diodes can be defined into two types depending upon the their current rating and the power rating so the diodes are divided into two categories a small signal diode and the large signal diodes so the two examples have been taken for the small signal diode so in4148 and in914 are the diodes for the small signal diode the specifications of these diodes are given here you can see from the current rating the current is relatively less these diodes are a good candidate for switching applications or for clamping the third type of diode that is in4007 is a power diode that you can see from the specification of this diode the current rating is relatively high so it is more suitable for the applications like it can be used as a power diode or rectifier so one should choose the diode according to the application the next diode that we will talk about is the vector diode now if we see the pn junction diode and if we try to see the reverse bias behavior of this diode it shows a very interesting property just to explore that particular behavior just connect the pn junction diode in a reverse polarity so that the positive terminal is connected to the n region and the negative terminal should be connected to the p region now if you increase the reverse bias voltage this depletion layer width will increase so you can try to relate this geometry with the capacitor these two regions n and p regions will be analogous to the parallel plate capacitors and this will be analogous to the parallel plates of the capacitor whereas the depletion region is analogous to the insulating material between the capacitor plates so now we know in case of parallel plate capacitor the its capacitance is given by epsilon a by d where d is the width of the insulating material so if we increase the reverse bias voltage the width of the depletion layer will increase so the capacitance will decrease so therefore with increase in reverse bias voltage the depletion region increases and the capacitance reduces now the capacitance of the vector diode is given by this expression here v is the reverse bias voltage find out is the built in potential and gamma depends on the doping profile so gamma is equals to 1 by 2 or 1 by 3 for abrupt or the linearly graded junction here cj0 is the capacitance corresponding to zero bias condition and it will be maximum now this particular diode is represented by this particular symbol here you can see this is similar to the pn junction and in series the one capacitor is added so this represents the symbol of the vector diode now there is a very important characteristics of vector diode and that is the q factor so suppose if a vector diode is used for a application like oscillator so if it has higher q it will provide relatively low phase noise similarly in case of tunable bandpass filter if the q factor is high so the tunable filter will be more selective or the response will be steeper so depending upon the application q factor should be chosen now we know the q is inversely proportional to the c value and the series resistance so there is a trade off between the capacitor value and the quality factor so one should choose the capacitor according to the application next i'll talk about the iv characteristics of this diode as i mentioned earlier capacitance decreases with 
increase in reverse bias voltage. So, this shows the characteristics of the vector diodes. Now, these IV characteristics of the diode can be altered by changing the doping profile. So, there are two types of doping profile abrupt and the hyper abrupt. In case of hyper abrupt doping profile, the capacitance variation range is relatively high, but it comes at the cost and low Q factor. Now, if I talk about the applications, these vector diodes can be used in various applications like voltage control oscillators, tunable filters, phase shifters, amplitude modulators, frequency multipliers, etc. Now, again, similar to the PN junction diode, one should choose the diode depending upon the applications. So, here I have taken the two examples of practical diode. One is VBY5702. The specifications for this diode is given here. The quality factor of this diode is very high. So, it is more suitable for the selective filter. And the another example I have taken where the tunability range is relatively more. You can see in this case, the Cmax to Cmin ratio is relatively more and it defines the tunability range. So, it is more suitable for the wide band tuning range. Like if you want to use it in vector network analyzer or spectrum network analyzer, then the diode will be more suitable. So, one should choose the diode again depending upon the application. The next type of diode is the short key diode. So, the short key diode is similar to the PN junction diode, but in this case, the junction should be made using the N type of material and the metal. So, in this case, the N type of epitaxial layer is deposited on the highly doped N type of substrate and then metal is deposited on the N type of epitaxial layer. Now, to make the electrical connection with the circuit, the metal contacts have been made and this is how the structure of uh, short key diode is made. Now, we know this is the junction of metal and the N type of semiconductor. So, the depletion region will be less in this case. So, this provides relatively low built in potential or low turn on voltage and due to the less depletion region, it provides relatively fast switching and less reverse recovery time. So, what is re reverse recovery time? So, re reverse recovery time is the time taken for a diode to switch from on state to the off state or vice versa. So, in case of PN junction diode, this time is around 5 to 100 nanoseconds. However, in case of short key diode, this time is of the order of 1 nanosecond. But there is a disadvantage of this diode, it suffers with the high reverse leakage current and low breakdown voltage due to the low depletion region. Now, if I compare the IV characteristics of this diode with the PN junction diode, from these IV characteristics you can see it provides low turn on voltage and it is of the order of around 0.3 to 0.4 volt and you can see here the reverse leakage current in this case is very high. It is of the order of micro ampere. However, in case of PN junction, it is of the order of nano ampere. And the breakdown voltage for this diode is relatively less. So, this is the drawback of this diode. Now, if this diode is to be designed for the vector applications, the doping profile should be uh, altered accordingly. Now, if I talk about the circuit model, this the circuit model of the short key diode is similar to the PN junction diode. Only thing is there will not be any diffusion capacitance. So, that is not included in this circuit model and the short key diode is represented by this symbol. This corresponds to the anode and this represents the cathode. If I talk about the applications, so the applications of the short key diode is similar to the PN junction diode. They are used in RF mixers and detectors, power rectifier, SMPS and cramping etc. Now, again here I have taken the example of two practical diodes. This one belongs to the power diode. You can see from the current and the voltage rating and this one is more suitable for the switching applications. So, one should choose again the diode according to the application. The next type of the diode is the pin diode. As the name says that here the intrinsic layer is inserted between the highly doped P and N junction. So, the I layer is deposited only on highly 
doped substrate and then highly doped P type of layer is deposited on the intrinsic region. So, this is how the geometry of this structure is made. Then again the contacts are made to make the connection with the electrical circuit. So, in this case the depletion region is relatively wider due to the insertion of this intrinsic region. So, in this case if I talk about the reverse bias case it will provide very wide depletion region. So, the capacitance for this diode will be very less and it will be almost constant because the depletion layer length is relatively wide. So, in this case it provide the lower capacitance and if I connect this diode in the forward bias then with increase in forward bias voltage first the recombination of electrons and holes will take place in the intrinsic region after that the recombination will take place in the P and N region. So, the resistance of the diode will vary. So, in the forward bias it will act like a variable resistor. Now, the symbol of the pin diode is represented here this denotes the diode and this represents the cathode. Now, if I want to make a circuit model of this it can be divided into two cases the forward bias and the reverse bias. In the forward bias it acts like a variable resistor and in the reverse bias it acts like a capacitor whose value will be much less as compared to the PN junction diode and then a series resistor is added to account for the losses in the depletion region. And these LS and CP are accounted for the uh, losses due to the packaging. Now, if I talk about the characteristics as I told you earlier the pin diodes offers high resistance, it provides lower capacitance due to the insertion of the intrinsic layer between the highly doped P and N layer, it provides high breakdown region due to the intrinsic region. So, if I talk about the applications these diodes are mainly used for the applications like in uh, uh, variable attenuators, RF switches, phase shifters, high voltage rectifiers, RF modulators, power limiters etcetera. Now, just to show again the applications I have taken the two practical diodes. The first one is corresponding to the power diode and the second one is more suitable for the high voltage variable resistors. So, one should again choose the diode according to the application. The next type of diode is the tunnel diode. So, the tunnel diode is a diode where the P and N junctions are highly doped. Now, we know in case of conventional P N junction diode, the conduction and the valence band are separated by a, a large forbidden gap. When they are heavily doped, the Fermi level shifts in the conduction band in case of N type of material and it shifts in the valence band in case of P type of material. So, there is a mechanical phenomena which takes place this quantum mechanical phenomena is called as the tunneling. So, in the thermal equilibrium the Fermi level of the conduction band and the valence band will line up. So, there will not be any flow of the electrons from the conduction band to the valence band. Now, if we increase the voltage from 0 to the voltage corresponding to the peak current and then the barrier potential will decrease and the level will shift up. So, there is a possibility that the electrons from the filled state in the conduction band can tunnel into the empty states in the valence band. So, th this can be seen from this particular figure. So, as the electrons tunnel from the valence band to the conduction band the current increases. Now, when the voltage is equivalent to the peak voltage in that case the maximum tunneling of electrons can take place from the conduction band to the valence band. So, it represents the maximum peak current. Now, if the voltage is increased further in that case the tunneling of charge carriers will decrease. So, the current will decrease with increase in voltage. Now, when the voltage is increased more than the valley voltage in that case there will not be any overlap of these bands. So, the current will come to a minimum value or it may be 0. Now, if voltage is increased further this tunnel diode will behave like a conventional P n junction diode and the injection current will start flowing which increases exponentially. So, that is represented by this I V curve. Now, if you try to 
make a load line if you make a shallower load line whose resistance is relatively higher then it will cut these IV characteristics at these three points 1, 2 and 3. Now this point 2 is the unstable point. Now th if there is a little deviation in the voltage then either it will come to point 1 or point 3. So depending upon the previous stage in this mode this tunnel diode are used as a uh, memory device or the storage device but this is of little less interest to the microwave circuit designers. The another type of load line can be drawn when the R is relatively less. So it will show you the steeper line and it will cut here in the negative resistance region. So this particular region represents a negative resistance region and if you connect like this circuit now with the an external LC component it will act like a oscillator. So here you can see that the negative resistance region is less so it will provide low current and the power provided by the tunnel diode will also be low. So it can provide the low output power oscillators. Now if you see here in this region the current increases linearly with voltage however in this region it acts like a conventional diode. So the region 2 is a transition between the linear region and the PN junction region and in this region it behaves like a negative differential resistance. Now this diode represented by this symbol, this represents the anode and this represents the cathode. So the characteristics of this diode is that it can operate up to very high frequency range, maybe up to millimeter wave frequency range and it can operate up to 100 gigahertz. It provides a very high speed operations and it provides low noise, low power consumption but it suffers with the drawback of low output power. So nowadays this is replaced by transistors. Now if I talk about the applications, tunnel diodes are used as a ultra high speed switches, they can be used logic memory storage devices, microwave oscillators and amplifiers, they can also be used in FM receivers. So here I have included the two examples of practical diode and this first one is used by the Russian military for switching applications and the second one that is IN3716 is used to make the oscillators or the transmitters. So depending upon the application again one can choose the diode. The next type of the diode is the gun diode. So this is a special kind of diode. It uses only one type of semiconductor material. Here the lightly doped N type of material is inserted between the two heavily doped N type of semiconductor material and the metallic contacts are made to make the electrical connection with the circuit and the heat sink is provided to account for the heat losses. So we know in case of few materials like gallium arsenide and indium phosphide, they have local minima in the conduction band. See one of the local minima contains the higher mobility and lower effective mass. However, the another minima which is at relatively higher energy level, it contains lower mobility and higher effective mass. So in general all the electrons occupy the lower energy states. Now if you provide the energy to this material, the electron gains the energy and they try to shift from the lower energy state to the higher energy state where the mobility is less. So as long as the concentration of electrons is more in this band, the current increases. However, if you again increase the electric field there will be a situation when the concentration of electrons will be more in this case which corresponds to lower mobility. So the mobility decreases with increase in voltage that means the current decreases with increase in voltage that represents the region 2. Now there will be a situation when you again increase the voltage then all the electrons will shift to this band and it will have the lowest mobility in this case the current will be minimum. So if you again increase the electric field, diode will behave like a normal PN junction diode and its current will increase exponentially. So this is the IV characteristics of this gun diodes. Now if you see here, this looks similar to the tunnel diode. But the, if you look into the operation principle of these diodes, they are quite different and that is the reason that gun diode provides relatively high RF output power. So, this diode is represented by this symbol. The next I will talk about the gun diode characteristics. 
दिस गन डायोड कैन ऑपरेट अप टू वेरी हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी रेंज मे बी अप टू वन फिफ्टी गेगा हर्ट्स विद रिलेटिवली हाई आउटपुट पावर एट लो कॉस्ट सो नाउ आर डेज मेनी ऑफ द गन डायोड्स आर रिप्लेसिंग दी माइक्रोवेव ट्यूब्स दे आर मोर रिलायबल एंड स्टेबल एट हायर फ्रीक्वेंसी रेंज बट दे सफर्स विद द लो डी सी टू आर एफ एफिशियंसी दे आर ऑल्सो सेंसिटिव टू द टेम्परेचर वेरिएशन एंड दे प्रोवाइड रिलेटिवली स्मॉल ट्यूनिंग रेंज एंड द पावर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन दीज डायोड्स आर रिलेटिवली हाई नाउ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द एप्लीकेशन दीज डायोड्स कैन बी यूज इन एज ए लो एंड मीडियम पावर माइक्रोवेव ऑसिलेटर्स एंड एम्पलीफायर्स दे कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज एज सेंसर्स इन डिटेक्शन सिस्टम्स Now here I have included the two practical diodes. This one is the pulse diode and provides relatively high output power. And this is designed in the X band. The uh, output power for this case is of 10 watt. And in this particular diode, this is a continuous wave diode, and it is designed for the car band. The output power for this diode is 300 milliwatt, which is considered as a medium power gun diode. Now just to conclude. in this lecture we started with semiconductor material then we saw how the conductivity of the material can be increased by adding the impurity in the material then we combined the n type of and p type of materials and the combination of n type and p type of material forms a pn junction which provides a very interesting feature like rectification switching then we talked about the vector diode and we saw that how this diode can provide the high tuning range of capacitance which will be used in various applications like in oscillators tunable filters etc after that we talked about the schottky diode which is the junction of metal and the semiconductor and due to this particular junction it provides very high switching so it is more suitable for the uh, mixing and the detection then we talked about the pin diode due to the insertion of intrinsic region between the two highly doped p and n layer it provides a variable resistance so it is highly used in case of variable attenuators and other applications then we talked about the tunnel diode which is highly doped p and junction diode and it provides a special feature of negative differential resistance but this suffers with the low output power so using the tunnel diodes low output uh, power uh, oscillators or the amplifiers can be designed then we talked about the gun diode and then we saw that the gun diode provides relatively high output power and nowadays they are replacing many of the microwave tubes and cavities so with this i would like to conclude thank you very much